Welcome back to KSTARS ECOS Demo Part 2. In this video we will continue where we left off from Part 1. If you haven't seen Part 1, please go back and review that because it will give you a better picture of what the demo is all about and what we did prior to getting to this point. So now let's continue. We focus the camera. Let's go ahead for this demo and pick a target. So I'm going to go over here and we are going to go to the, let's see here, where is this should be fine. I'm going to go over to the Veil Nebula. So I am going to skew over there. So the mount it's going to track over. Here comes the telescope. And the next step I'm going to do is solve. So what we do is we go over to the, not the alignment, um, yeah, the alignment tab. And go ahead and just solve and capture. Everything should set, be set up for the last time we did this. And again, it'll go through the uh, starting the solver, capture the image, start, starting the solver, and then come up with a solution and move the telescope to center to the target. We can't really see it right. Well, you might be, well, you can't really see it very well, but I believe that it's over here very dim but we only captured four and a half seconds next step is let's go ahead and uh, do a guide pick a guide star so we use the guide menu everything's preset up here the guide or camera is set up we guide via the ioptron eq45 I do not use the QHY uh, camera, you can use the or, uh, the connector on the camera to do that, but all the documentation that I've seen recommends using it this way. Uh, everything should be set up adequately. We're exposing two and a half or three and a half uh, second time frame. It, this varies. Usually, this is the top end. It's a little bit breezy out there tonight, so I I don't know how this is going to work, but we're going to go ahead and and press the guide and it does the normal thing is what push here two dummy does is it'll go out and do an alignment now what I don't see here let me pause this and pause okay so here it is it's it's starting the process it came across it selected the guide star by the way I'm binding on 2.2 2, 2, 2 times 2 if you you can use 1 times 1 um, and the only issue that I found with the 1 time 1 1 x one, uh, 1 by 1 bind is you can't see it in the status menu very well or it doesn't show up at all and I'll, I'll explain what that is in a minute so what it does is goes through the calibration process. It does a, a RA drift forward, reverse, then it does the deck back lash, and does a deck uh, drift forward and a drift back. And once it's satisfied with everything, it'll start guiding. During this process, of course, it's it's determining how the camera is moving, what the direction is, what the angle is. Um, and uh, it sets everything up internal what it needs to to start the guiding process there is a calibration tab over here that shows and let me bring this up a little bit that shows you how it tracks when it does the calibration and how far it, it moves Let's go back into the drift plot. 
you can see here that it keeps track of the drift um, and depending on how everything is now with this setup here I could go at two and a half arc seconds without any issues with elongated or starved movement might not be tack sharp for an instance but um, it, it, it seems to do pretty well overall Sometimes I have problems with wind or some other issues and tracking doesn't work as, as well as it should. It's been my experience using the internal guider. I usually have a value of around one arc second drift as shown in this diagram here or this chart. Okay, so it's guiding. Let's go over, over to the camera settings so you can see the, how the camera is going to be used. Now I'm just going to do a captured frame. And I'm just going to do a simple capture right now. I'm going to do a, a 30 second exposure. only, And I'm just going to do a preview capture. And what it'll do is it'll it'll capture. Now I haven't turned on the, the the cooler yet, and I probably should go ahead and do that. And the way you do that is you go ahead and select the value where you want the temperature to run. I'm going to run tonight at minus 20 degrees Celsius. There's our image, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and start that. It will go ahead and turn on the cooler. I'm also going to click on this, which says don't do any don't do any uh, capturing until the temperature is reached essentially and let's see let me bring this kind of snuck behind here's here's what we just took so this was a 30 second exposure and as you can see the veil nebula is being shown here one nice feature is this is a um, it, it has a debear feature built into the uh, the viewer so that's kind of a nice feature of this and this could be set up different methods I'm gonna go ahead and X this out it's still going to be continuing to cool down and I'm gonna pause here for a second okay as that continues to cool down I'm gonna show you the toolbox type summary I call it the summary window as you can see here, it's a summary of the guiding, of the tracking status, of the focus, and of the capture. We're not really capturing anything, we're just waiting for the temperature to cool down so we can start capturing. Let's go back to the camera. There's some limit settings here that are useful. You, when you're guiding, here's, here's the type, this is the type of image you're taking whether it's light or a bias or dark or flat um, this is your gain control for the camera I normally shoot at 180 gain setting with an offset of 50 now this time sometimes changes depending on on if where the moon is in the cycle and how much pollution uh, light pollution there is uh, it seems to work out fairly good at five minute exposures so I normally use that guiding deviation we want to turn guiding deviation on I usually leave it at about two and a half if it goes beyond two and a half it'll detect that and it'll start the capture over again you could narrow this down depending on your guiding and uh, it seems like a uh, okay value for me the autofocus you could turn on autofocus so if it reaches a a point where the HFR goes above a certain value it will do an autofocus it'll also autofocus if there's a delta temperature change or you could focus every min X amount of minutes 
I normally with this setup because I know it, it it's pretty stable and the temperature I don't expect to be drifting too much tonight I will probably just go and focus every hour or six fifty nine minutes in this case as you can see the temperature is already at minus twenty two and it's starting to back off there's a there is a tab up here next to this observatory this is the ecos or the indie control panel sometimes it's useful to use that for certain things for instance this is showing the cooling power is dropping and we're at plus 39 percent power and the temperature is still decreasing it'll stabilize at a value and it'll keep the the cooling temperature consistent and constant. I haven't had any problems with this drifting around. Once it kind of settles in, it's, uh, it's pretty stable. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. So we've gotten the temperature turned down. We've kind of did a quick test on the preview of the image. What I am going to do is show you how to do a sequence. And we're going to do a sequence of um, in this case, for purposes, I'm not going to do a very long exposure. We'll keep this short and I'll, I'll cut in and out. We're going to do a count of five. <clears throat> and luminosity is going to be, we don't, we're not going to be using any filters other than the luminosity filter. We've already set our gains up. Uh, these are the options to set up the prefix the duration and the temp or timestamp for the image. Uh, we've already set up the limit settings so we could go ahead and now create a sequence so if we add go to the sequence queue and hit plus this adds a job to the sequence queue. So we'll go ahead and hit plus you'll see that it's on here. Now you could also add and I'll do this for demonstration purposes too. Let's say you want to create a dark frame set. You could do a dark frame set. We're going to just do five. And I normally, with the prefix for this, is put DF. It puts it in a separate directory, but sometimes it's, it's helpful to identify this better. And I'm going to go ahead and add this sequence. So the next step is, after the sequence is all set, we know we're guiding and the guiding looks good. Uh, we've focused, everything looks good. Now we're going to actually start our, our exposure sequence. So we're going to hit the start sequence and now it's in process. I'm going to go over to the tools window or the summary page and you can see that the, it's changed that the status is capturing. Our guiding is still on track and when we get the first image done, it'll display in the capturing window. It also gives you an overall job. We have four minutes approximately to capture this particular overall job. Uh, you'll notice that it, it, it did the picture here. Um, obviously there's not enough gain to bring out any of the nebulosity in the in the image, but you know that's not uncommon and we're only shooting 30 second exposures um, so this is going to continue on through the sequence and when it completes I'll, I'll start this up again I'm going to pause okay it's finishing up the last image now by the way I have it set up so it actually dithers so it's dithering between images and you can see in that dithering period on the uh, chart here. So once it's done with this, it's going to prompt me to cover, because I have the sequence, the next sequence to do a dark frame. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the scope. So I'm going to put this on pause. I've covered the scope and I'm going to go ahead and con hit continue. And it'll start continuing the next se sequence. Now if you had an automatic cover it could be triggered to automatically cover your, your objective lens for a dark frame. I don't have that. I have to run out there and throw the dew cap on and um, complete the, the sequence. 
sometimes I wait till the end. I don't always tie in a, a light images to the, the dark frame. There's no reason why you can't complete different images throughout the evening through a step-by-step -step process rather than taking all your image you want to take and, and using it this method. I'm just showing you this way because it's show you the capabilities of a sequence queue and what you could do with a sequence queue. And it's doing its dark frame capturing right now. So when this gets done, it's doing dark frame capturing, there is a statistic window and it sh basically shows you what your evening was about and what your telescope was doing during this period of time. You can see here where we're, we're um, capturing um, guiding is up here. The blue, I believe, are dithering periods, or they're not guiding periods. Uh, you could see where we did an alignment. So you could use this as a reference going back at a night and take a look at what your telescope did during the night. It also provides the guiding statistics over here that's another nice feature and then the only thing else we need to cover the scheduler is another very powerful tool that allows you to schedule multiple targets through the night and essentially once you've set this up and started the process you could uh, you could go to bed and come back in the morning uh, and it's it's completed uh, it does all of the normal things of tracking, focusing, aligning, and guiding for an object. Um, and you don't have to sit there and babysit. Uh, usually I like to babysit a little bit because I've, I've seen and had some issues in the past. So if though I'm doing a long exposure and it's going to be guiding and taking capturing and, and a target for a great length of time, I have no problems letting it just sit there and do its thing and, and go to bed and wake up in the morning. So anyway, that's the brief introduction to ECOS. As you can see here, our images are done. The status is complete. Our camera is complete. Uh, and we are still, uh, we're, well, our guiding is, is still suspended because we did a dark frame. <laughs> I forgot to mention it will suspend during a dark frame um, capture because there's no need to guide with the telescope and it makes sense. Anyway that's that is the setup and, and demo of ECOS in a nutshell. Like I said it's a bit overwhelming. It's a very powerful program. It, it takes a lot in consideration once you get used to the menu structure or the uh, the display structure it becomes easier to use uh, I'm very happy with it and I support the ECOS uh, the ECOS Indie Lib uh, software uh, it's a it's a great uh, software and it's amazing what the guys have done done with the software so that's my demo if I think of anything else I'll kick back on here and we'll we'll edit it in